It's so amazing. We are living still in the Garden of Eden, yet we fail to see it because we're contending with it. And we're trying to force this here and force that. There. You don't even have to walk on water, although one day you will. And you can still get your game on. This week's talk is bathing in truth. One of my all-time favorite topics because of the treasures that are just beneath the surface of our own awareness. It, it, is, it is the name of the game of life. Truth. Here's a little quote I wrote for you. We live, every one of us including me, our lives behind bars. Lives that were meant to be free. Bars wrought of our own misunderstandings. Misunderstanding what? The truth. The truth is so benign. It is so simple. It is our highest responsibility to say what is it, which is why when I wrote Infinite Possibilities, in the very first chapter, as you already know from the Infinite Possibilities themed month, what the absolutes of being are, the truths of being. And if you remember, I, I came up with five and I could come up with no more. These five are immutable, immovable. They're absolute whether you believe them or not. And the relevance of all of this to your life is towards the end of this jam session. And it is beyond exciting. And as we peel away the layers of the onion of our lives with our beliefs and our views and our opinions, we are left with God, truth, infinite possibilities, automatic miracles. That's where this is going. Miracles galore. Miracles like our reference in the scriptures. This is what Jesus did. Miracles as were referenced in autobiography of a yogi. This is truth. This is the game. This is where we're all headed. Everything else is a fleeting lie. And I hate to call it a lie because of the negative connotations. It's part of the ticket of our presence here in time and space that we're going to believe in the fleeting lies of have versus have not, here versus there, now versus then, so that we can be Move through fear and desire to destinations, making possible a journey through the illusions where we can ultimately see what is what, A is A, get our game on. So that's what the truth is. And the importance of truth has been chronicled throughout the ages. And one of my favorite stories to retell is that of Adam and Eve and the forbidden fruit, the original sin. Now, I've expounded on this in some of my books, but I'll spare you all the books. I'm going to get to tell it to you live and in person right now on Christmas Eve as I broadcast from Mexico. Okay, so the story of Adam and Eve is a metaphorical story. How do I know? Because of where this is going, you're going to be, oh yeah. It's a metaphorical story of a man and a woman. You know, God come alive in the illusions of time, space, and matter, in the Garden of Eden, the pristine, luscious, perfect jungles, safe and comfy jungles. Don't let the word jungles throw you. Excuse the weed blower and the Christmas carols. Okay, this is part of a live broadcast. This pristine jungles of time and space, and there they are. God come alive. And it's so real. It's so tantalizing. There's sights, there's sounds, there's colors, there's weed blowers, and there is an apple. And the apple is so lustrous, and it has weight in the palm of your ethereal body, your, your hand. Your body is a projection of the divine. You are projecting it, streaming it into place in life. And you're holding in your illusory hand. This illusory apple, it's all make-believe. Those aren't, those aren't the five truths of being. 
the apple is make believe, but Adam and Eve are looking at it and they're like, whoa, and there's the fragrance and there's the coloration. And they know, because they're streaming it, that an apple would nourish the illusions of a physical body and it would taste good. And they're like, should we bite it? Should we not? Should we bite it? Should we not? And they, they bit into the apple and fell from grace. Now, this is where the story takes an awful, ugly interpretation, as it is most commonly told. A fall from grace is all bad, right? There's nothing good about falling from grace. They fell into the illusions head over heels. Why? Because biting into that apple signified a tipping point where it was no longer seen as what it really was. Just an extension of themselves as pure God. No, it's an apple and it's going to be delicious and it's going to nourish our physical body. That tipping point of biting into the apple all of a sudden set up the physical world as something to contend with. Oh, there's an apple here and there's lions and tigers and bears over there. And there's the top of the mountain and the bottom of the mountain and friends and enemies and good and bad and dark and light. And the games began. This was not a fall from grace that was a mistake. This was not an accident. I would, I would say in the mind of God, it was par for the course. This was meant to happen. The illusions were supposed to be so enthralling, so captivating that you could just frolic in them. But when you stop seeing the truth that you are everywhere always at once, when you stop start seeing the world as something to contend with instead of something to change when you don't like it, all of a sudden you feel helpless. Hence the term fall from grace. Hey, this whole fall from grace happened inside of God, inside of divine mind. There's nothing on the outside. Everything is played out here. And so how, how much of a fall from grace would it be anyway? None. Zero. Par for the course. The adventures begin. And now, through lifetimes and incarnations and falling in love and being loved and knowing what you love and knowing what you don't love. Suddenly there's these, you know, highs and lows and emotion was born. Transcend the illusions on the fly, AKA wake up in the dream and it's child's play. I mean, I haven't even fully woken up in the dream and I'm living a fantasy life. And many of you, if not all of you, to some degree or another, would recognize that you do live in paradise. There's sights and sounds and colors and symbiotic relationships and cooperation among the masses. It's like, it's so amazing. We are living still in the Garden of Eden, yet we fail to see it because we're contending with it. And we're trying to force this here and force that. There. You don't even have to walk on water, although one day you will. And you can still get your game on. That is what it's all about. So this Adam and Eve and the original sin, the original sin was not, you know, a black stain on humanity. It was going so deep into the illusions that you forgot they were illusions. So they call it the original sin. Sin has worked up a really awful connotation. It's now synonymous with murder and all these other things. But, but we're, what we're talking about, the original sin, which leads to all other folly, all other mistakes, all other injurious experiences, was failing to see the truth. Do you see where this is relevant? It's all about the truth. And we all live behind bars, including me. Because we believe this is real and we believe that's real and we believe I want to go there and I better visualize it and I need to go within and I need to jump through all these hoops and hurdles. Hey, it's okay. We can do that kind of stuff. And it's still awesome. But wouldn't it be fun to not stub our toes as often as we do? Wouldn't it be fun to not get bent over in pain over unexpected circumstances? Wouldn't it be fun to consciously move towards grace and ease and financial abundance and perfect health and longevity and rejuvenation or whatever your heart desires. There are only those five <clears throat> absolutes and only one has a movable part. Your thoughts become things. Change your thoughts and all things are possible. How can you change your thoughts when you still believe in the lies and lies? Don't worry about it. When you still believe that the world is something to contend with. It's harder 
peel away the layers of that onion, reveal more truth, see God behind the eyes of every single human being, every cat and dog and chicken. <clears throat> see God everywhere, in the table, in the computer, in my eyes right now, in the eyes you see when you look in the mirror. See possibilities, understand there is order, understand there is meaning, understand that you are bathed in love. And whether or not you feel that love every second of the day, one day you will, whether or not you feel it now, you can know it's there. You can practice experiencing it. You can pretend it. All these other things that I shared so far in these mini manifesting workshops, you know, you can manifest abundance. You can manifest healing. You can manifest clarity. You can manifest enlightenment. You can manifest a greater view of truth. You can manifest less dependence on the illusions. That doesn't mean you divorce yourself from the illusions. You know, I, I love a note from the universe I once wrote that said, you know, you guys got enlightenment all wrong. It's not some yogi sitting on a cliff in solitude for the rest of his millennia or however long he wants to sit there or she wants to sit there. No, no, no. When you're truly enlightened, this is not cause to, to move away from the physical world. You wanted to be here. God wants to be you here as you in the illusions. Enlightenment is cause for nonstop celebration. Enlightenment is cause for meeting more people, meeting more God. Enlightenment is cause for starting more businesses and making more money and healing more, healing what hurts and, and bringing joy everywhere you go. This is what enlightenment promises. It's not, it's not die to the illusions. Uh, it's not, it's not transcend. The, it's not about transcending the illusions so that not only can you walk on water and walk through walls, but leave this place. Who would want to leave when you finally realize the truth that you live inside of God in a world that you create on the fly? This is what truth promises. And everything else is about getting to truth. Creative visualization is a tool to manipulate the physical world to your liking. But you could have loved it the way it was. And if you love it the way it is, it'll be easier to change it to new ideas that you have for experiences you want to move into. This is what truth promises. Life is a game now. Okay, so let me see. Let me see. Making this relevant to your life. I found a note from the universe, several. But here's one that, that speaks to what truth will do for you. There is no problem, conflict, challenge, grievance, symptom, twitch, spasm, ache, or pain, my dear friend. And let me add, no dream that you would ever like to realize that's not yet realized. None. Not even those grievances, challenges, problems you attribute to the physical world that cannot be spontaneously solved, relieved, manifested, or overcome by seeing what you have not yet allowed yourself to see. That's why you have them, after all. And that line is, to put it in context, that's why you have problems, conflicts, challenge, challenges, unresolved, unmanifested dreams. You have them to get them. And in the getting, you're going to realize you always had that power. It was just imagine of uh, and just a just a matter of changing the channel and behaving differently in spite of appearances, in spite of the lies, in spite of the illusions that now surround you. This is almost identical in spirit to another note from the universe. It's like something about celebrating mistakes and challenges. Not mistakes, because there are no mistakes. Challenges. How else would you know? There are still some things you don't understand. Any challenge means... There's something you don't understand. Even if it's so-and-so is a jerk, even though so-and-so is not paying child support, even you are an unlimited being of God. If you want more money, you can manifest more money. You can go out into the world and fish, as the Bible said. Toss your gold coins into the mouth of the fish. Or, you know, I'm the worst person for remembering scripture. I've read so little of it. Um, but move into the world following your heart and all good things will be added to you. The truth will set you free. Now you get it. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. As I've explained in some of my books, this is not seeking the pearly gates. This is not strive to live a pious, 
ethical, moral life. And when you die, all things are added to you. That's how it's understood by most today. No, seek first to understand the truth that you are of God, by God, pure God in every single moment, in every single day. And so is everyone else. And those you don't want to play with, change the picture in your mind and move on. And they're gone. Change your vibration and those matching your vibration will show up. It doesn't happen spontaneously. That's where you came from. That's where you're going. You wanted the illusions. You wanted the challenge. You wanted adventure. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. Realize you live in it. That you have dominion over all things already here and now. It doesn't matter if you sinned before. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you are. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. So think of some of the think of some of the perks, true enlightenment. And you can get there gradually. Come on, you're watching me right now, okay? So you're already well on your way. You can get there gradually. You don't have to have that moment of like pure enlightenment and there's a halo around you. That's where we're all going. But you don't have to even be there. And suddenly the life is tilted in your favor and the elements yearn to do your bidding. So think what it would be like just gradually, feeling better, more energetic all day long, sleeping great every single night, uh, healing those aches and pains that bother you. It's like suddenly you feel so much better. You're standing taller. Uh, suddenly those blemishes are gone. Suddenly the whatever you want to change about your physical appearance is like gradually morphing into a place of, is, am I getting better looking or am I just enjoying looking at myself more? You know, do you have that dilemma? You're getting better looking and you're getting younger and you're getting happier and you're starting to glow. It's true. It works. Think of what else you could get. More money. You don't got a mortgage anymore. You don't have to sleep in your car anymore. You don't, whatever you, wherever you are, you can go there. And from there, you can go there. And from there, it doesn't end. You can have more money by dwelling in truth because things get easier. You can move towards performing miracles. The miracles in the Bible, the miracles in the yogi autobiography of a yogi, those are real. And didn't Jesus say, gosh, I sound so biblical. Didn't Jesus say the things I do, you, you will do and greater. He wasn't kidding. He didn't say if you go to church on Sundays. He didn't say if you don't eat fish on Fridays. He didn't say he didn't say all that stuff. Believe and you shall receive. Period. Period. You, yes, now you can perform miracles. You already do. You live on this hurtling gem flying through space, speaking complete sentences, having internet memberships. You're rocking it, baby. You're rocking it. And you're going to rock so much more when you give yourself credit for the miracles you already performed. You're already gorgeous. You're already cool. You already have these amazing ideas. Your creativity is through the roof. Imagine all of that a thousandfold. That's what truth gives. Imagine being able to summon truth all the time by going within. That's what truth does. Because suddenly it's not out there and down here. It's all one. It's all one. Imagine the clarity the peace of mind, the joy that emanates from you. Imagine people commenting on your aura. It's like it's hard to look at you because you're kind of glowing. You know, imagine being able to walk through walls. I want to give you my list of books that have rocked the autobiography of a yogi. And I'm going to tell you which ones speak to miracles. And one of my favorite that speaks to miracles is Illusions by Richard Bach. I'm telling you, if truth lights you up and the possibilities light you up, you've got to read these books. I mean, I'm not a reader. Illusions will take you four hours and you're done. And then read his other book, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, which made the cover of Time Magazine and People Magazine the same week, you know, back in the 70s or whatever. Um, in Illusions, there's a reluctant Messiah, which is all, all of us. And there's a messiah who's kind of, you know, just chilling out and away from the masses. And they're flying biplanes for $5 a ride, you know. A real easy novel. And and miracles, you know, Don Shimoda, the, the prophet, the messiah, the messiah. You know, wherever he goes, you know, dead plants come to life. And um, all these really cool, fun miracles start happening. And Richard says something to him about these crazy miracles, these little miracles. And, and Don said, sorry, Richard, it's not the way the world works. 
when you begin understanding the truth and how things are really in time and space, you automatically start getting miracles. You don't even think of them. Didn't they say that Jesus's robe? Okay, I'm going all in. Okay, I'm a Bible toter. No, not really. But Jesus's robe was this immaculate. Dust and dirt won't even cling to you. Your feet walking through a dusty desert won't even be dirty. You will be at a higher vibration. This is what truth does automatically. You automatically start getting miracles. You walk by a dead plant and it comes to life. You walk by a sick person who wants to be healed and believes it can happen and they'll be healed. I mean, this is what awaits all of us. We are living in the stone age, spiritually speaking. You can do it now. I'm pushing, man. I'm pushing. Before this time is, before this turn in space is done, I'm there. And I, I, you are too, okay? What else did Don Shimoda say to Richard that was so good that I wanted to share with you? Oh, so they're walking on water and they're doing these crazy miracles and illusions. And Richard, the reluctant Messiah, says to the Messiah, Don, can you walk through walls? And Don's like, Richard, 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 no, I cannot walk through walls. When you say it that way, I cannot walk on through walls. Even though they've been playing and swimming in the dirt and walking on water, he's like, no way can I walk through walls. And so Richard thinks, and he says, maybe it's a question. Don says it is. So what's the question I should ask? And Don said, you tell me. And Richard thinks, and he says, Don, would it be possible for you to move the illusion of your physical body through the illusion of a wall. And Don is like, you did it, you did it, you did it. The question answers itself, doesn't it? This is seeing the world differently. This is dying to the illusions, not to leave them behind, but to master them on the fly. Speak and think and move with these understandings. As I'm leaning into it, you lean into it. Let's see who does the first miracle, okay? The first indisputable omg that's a miracle all right another note from the universe then we wrap this up the truth not only sets you free it slays all dragons banishes all fears connects all dots and casts a brand new spell over those who've yet to see yet to see you as i now do the truth not only sets you free but it fills buckets with gold it heals what hurts. It mends broken hearts. You see forever and you know you own it. You are it. You create it. You will sculpt it. You have no doubt. And if you have a doubt, the truth will dispel that doubt. You may be timid. You'll still prevail. Haven't I said time and again in these other mini manifesting workshops that, that even with our heads in the sand as a civilization, we still thrive. So you don't even have to be perfect. You can think, maybe I can have a miracle. And that's going to be enough for you to start having miracles. You don't have to be a goody two shoes. Dwell in truth, that universe. Oh, and then the then that note went on to say, and you already had the world spinning in the palm of your hand. Careful now. Dwell in truth, and you will literally start to glow. Your challenge. I want you to take an issue of yours, an issue. You know what an issue is? It's an invitation for greatness. It's a problem. It's a challenge. I want you to take an issue of yours. And instead of thinking what you should believe, ask yourself what you're not yet seeing. Okay. We can tackle issues by aligning our beliefs. And I've done that with you in an earlier mastermind, a mini manifesting workshop. And and we wrote down beliefs that we would like to install. That's a good work. There's so many workarounds for getting there. There's so much wiggle room in time and space. But what I want you to do is to head up that sheet of paper or that document on your computer. And I want you to write down what it is that you're not seeing. What truth are you missing? And prepare to be astounded. Move into it gently. Play with the idea. See the validity of what you come up with, change your behavior, and you will be challenge-free in that regard. And then another invitation for more awesomeness will show up.